All right, hi everyone. In this video, I am really excited to show you a demonstration of TensorFlow's text, text generation with an RNN, that's a recurrent neural network. I'll put this link in the description so that you can click on here and follow along. This tutorial generates new text using a machine learning algorithm that looks at a bunch of example text, looks for patterns, and then creates some new text based on those patterns. So in their example, they start with Shakespeare. So this uh, sonnet, would we call this a sonnet here, is actually not Shakespeare. This is created by the algorithm based on the patterns of Shakespeare. As you read through this, you can tell that it's, it's not quite right. It's a little bit nonsensical. And uh, what I'm going to do today uh, in this video is I'm going to show you how you can gather your own example data set from anything that you want to recreate and then generate us a new section of that text. We're going to do this in Google Colab. So at this link, you should see a button here that says run in Google Colab. So go ahead and click on that. And if you are unfamiliar with Colab, I'll put some links also in the description so that you can get more familiar with what it is and the interface for how to use it. Once you get here, you should be signed in with your Google account uh, if you want to be able to save this or, or make changes, so make sure you're signed in. And on the left-hand side, we see a table of contents for all of the sections of our tutorial. And in the middle, we can scroll through and we can see this is a lot of code uh, interspersed here with some text and some images explaining what's happening in the code. So I'll just pause for a moment here and say that this is a lot and you don't need to understand how to write this code or even what is all happening in this code in order for, uh, for you to actually run this tutorial and generate your own text. There's only a few key things that we need to know how to do. And the first is that we need a new data set. So we need to know, well, what do we want to create? So I've decided that I'm going to create a new fake commencement speech based off of a bunch of existing commencement speeches. And so what I need to do is I need to create that file with a bunch of that text all in one file so that we can have that as a data set and tell this algorithm that that's what it should model itself after. So the first thing to do is decide what you want to do and then go and find some text. Okay, so I'm here on the internet and I've got four commencement speeches transcripts that I can use in just a minute when I need them. Now, because I've done this already, I have a txt file here that has all of this text copied into it. Now you probably don't have this yet and that's okay. If you do, let me show you how to do this. If you don't, bear with me for 20 seconds. If you have it here on your computer, you go over to the file browser right here. It says connect to a runtime. It's automatically connecting me here. You can click this button if you're not connected. That's a Google Colab thing. Find the file on your computer and click and drag it into the file browser out here on the left-hand side. This pop-up is reminding me that anything you upload in Google Colab is going to be deleted after the session is over. So you cannot rely on it being there next time you open up this tab. You'll have to re-upload it again. So I'm going to say, okay, there's my file. I have now the, the, the file that I need and I can access it with my code and I'll show you that in just a minute. Before we do that, we have to show those of you who don't have a TXT file already how to create one. So you can create one um, using text edit on a Mac or I think it's Notepad on Windows. You can do that if you want, you're welcome to do so. You can also create a TXT file directly in Colab. So because we're here already, I'll just show you how to do that. We have to write some code, three lines of code to make this happen. So scroll up to the top and click here on the copyright symbol. I'm just checking my mic's on. I'm worried that I didn't turn it on, I did. Uh, click on this copyright symbol. 
uh, text here. And that's just so that we're targeted at the top because we're gonna create our own new code cell by clicking this co plus code button, insert code cell here at the top. Now, if we've clicked on the top copyright, it's gonna create it right here. If you scroll down here and you clicked on something else, it's gonna create that cell wherever you have clicked. So we've got our new code cell, and there's three lines we need to type in, and I've got them here. I'm just gonna copy paste them for you, and I will also put this in the description so that you can also copy paste it right in, okay? So <clears throat> this is showing me the lines, the line numbers. You don't need to type the numbers in here, just starting here with my new TXT file. So these three lines of code generate a new TXT file and create it in the place where you tell it to be created, which is right here in the content folder of my file browser over here. And then with this name. So I'm gonna scroll back out here. When I run this cell, which I will do right now. Oh, okay, warning, this notebook was not authored by Google. This is a little security warning. We're okay, we can keep running this, I promise. Run anyway. Okay, I get a little checkbox that says Google Colab ran the code. And um, over on in the file browser, right, we see the, the file that I had just uploaded, commencement speeches. We don't need that, I'm gonna delete it. Okay. And when this file browser updates, you see that the text file, the TXT that we just ran, is now in this folder. Now, if you don't see it, you can minimize the file browser and bring it back up and you should see it. Or you can navigate to a, a, the folder just above this one. You see all of these folders. Don't let it overwhelm you. If you get here, just find your content folder, click on that, and you should see that file there. So now this is a new file. It's created in your file browser, and you can double click on it, and it should bring up this right-hand side panel that uh, now you can type into or paste, right? So we can go now and get our content, and you can paste it right in here, okay? And we'll just do that really quickly. Okay. And Steve Jobs. And I also have Bill and Melinda Gates. Okay. So now I can scroll through here. I've got 115 lines um, of all of this text from commencement speeches. Okay. This little tiny asterisk right here means that it, the file is not yet saved, okay? So we need to save it so that it updates this, this TXT file. You can save it by just clicking away from it. And notice the asterisk is now gone, okay? If I make an edit here, right, the asterisk is back. Okay, now it's gone, it's saved. So it's auto-saving for you, okay? Auto-saved. So there's my text file, it's created, I have my content, and now we are ready to run this tutorial using our own data set of text. I'm gonna minimize this, we don't need to look at it right now. And I'm going to come back to my code. This part we ran, we don't need to run it again. Now we can start the tutorial. So under text generation with an RNN, you scroll down, you are going to get to setup. And what I'm looking for here is a spot in the code where it goes and grabs the Shakespeare data because the Shakespeare data is the thing that we want to replace. So here it says download the Shakespeare data set. And that is with uh, this code cell right here. That's one line, it says path to file. And everything after here, after that equal sign, is telling Colab how to find the Shakespeare set, which I don't want. If you want it, you should try it with the Shakespeare set. I don't want it, so I'm gonna delete everything after the equal sign. And I want to change this path to file to now match the file path of 
the file that I just created with the, all of my new text, my text uh, database. So that file path you can find by coming over to that file location, so my new txt file.txt. You can right click or you can click on the little snowman menu and choose copy path, okay? Copy path and then you're going to paste it in this line in the download the Shakespeare data set. Paste it here, it must be in quotes, it must be in double quotes here, okay? So make sure you add your quotes, it should turn red and run this cell. And if it runs successfully, you, your, uh, your, your Colab notebook code knows where your new file is and you're good to go. If you, did, if you get an error right here, you wanna check that your runtime's still connected. You wanna check that you put the quotes in here correctly. And you wanna check that the file name, my new txt file.txt matches this file name exactly. And you also might wanna check that this path is actually where the, the file is. Right? It should be if you come straight here and you do copy path and paste it in. Also, if you just created your own with this command, notice that this matches because we created the file exactly in that path. That's what we told it to do. Okay, so now that we have our, our text file, we are good. Actually, we can just run this straight away. Okay, uh, because we can just run it with all the default settings that they used for the Shakespeare. In order to run this, you have to run every single code cell from top to bottom in order. And there's 101 cells. So you could, hypothetically, come through here and click and run, and click and run, and click and run. But don't do that. That's the hard way. You can also just minimize the entire set here and you get one run button. And if you click this run button, it will run all the code cells in order from top to bottom for you. And then you can expand it and follow as it's running and maybe I'll catch up to it here. It's already built the model, it's trying the model. Okay, it should be training at this point, and it is, okay. So we'll expand that, and here's my training, I caught up. Okay, so these are called epochs, sometimes epochs, okay. And we, uh, in the default code, have chosen to run it 20 times because it says equals 20 here. And it ran 20 times and now it's moving on to the generate text portion of the code and it's running and it's running and it is done. Okay, so here's my text that I generated. Um, I'll copy it and just put it in a, in a larger section here for you to see it. So uh, it's, it's okay, right? It's not great. It's not as maybe as exciting as you were hoping for it to be, a, a good commencement speech. So note that most of these are not real English words. And this is because the model is not, it doesn't know what a word is. It only knows what a character is when it starts. And so when we only run it through 20 times on a relatively small data set, it's having a hard time figuring out what, what the words are. So in the tutorial, it says right down here, the easiest thing you can do to improve the results, so you want it to be more like a readable summary here, is to train it for longer, right? So we're gonna increase the number of epochs we have here. And um, I'm just gonna do 100. This might take a while to run, okay? But I know that it's gonna work better. So I'm gonna change it to 100 I'll rerun re that cell and then rerun this executing, execute the training. 
and then I will need to, when that's done, I will need to regenerate the text. So you can do that um, to make it better. We'll see, we'll compare the results once this is done training. Another thing that you can do is um, <clears throat> you can change the starting string. So notice that it said uh, Romeo, right, under generate Go to generate text, right? There's two code cells here. And line three says Romeo. So this is the, the starting word. And you can change this to, I don't know, welcome uh, class of 2025. Okay. So that instead of our text starting with Romeo, like a Shakespeare, it can start with a more traditional commencement speech beginning. Um, and that, those two things I think will give us a better result. So we're already at 58, 59. And uh, we'll see how this, how this turns out. So you may get some errors in here and that's totally normal. So don't uh, freak out if you have some errors. The most common thing is that you have not run the code in order from start to finish. You've missed one or two boxes. Another thing to check is that your TXT file might not be long enough. Um, you might want to add in more, more content to your TXT file. Um, and Another thing is that you might get disconnected from your Wi-Fi and you might uh, no longer be connected to the runtime and that can mess it up. Okay, it's done. So let's generate our text and see how this turns out. Look at that. Okay, that already looks much better. I'm seeing words that I recognize. Let's see. Okay, so there's still some words in here that are not, not, you know, recognizable, but it's much better. Welcome, class of 2025. Or your head about your gutter. Okay, so we might want to run this a little bit longer next time. Um, and there's some other things that you could get into. You could change the temperature. Uh, setting with the temperature parameter, which is how predictable the text ends up to be. We can make it a little bit more predictable and then we'd get more words that we recognize. Um, and then you can also change the length of the generated text as well as uh, parameters in the code. You don't need to do that for now. I'm going to leave that out and uh, wish you good luck in creating your new uh, AI generated text. I hope you have fun. And please uh, do share the results with me in the comments section below if you get something really good. Thanks.